caution. It's well known throughout the construction industry that the strong alkalinity of cement products, including mortars and concrete, can cause chemical burns just like a strong acid. By the time you realize you're being burned, you may already have skin damage. If wet concrete can damage the skin and eyes, just imagine what concrete wash waters can do to our drinking water supply and environment. The chemicals in the washout water can and will adversely affect water quality in our rivers, lakes, streams, and even groundwater if not properly handled. Changes to the Clean Water Act over the past two decades have put more and more responsibilities on the construction industry as a whole. Everyone has more regulations and responsibilities. Ready-mix producers who make and deliver the concrete, construction site operators who buy and place the concrete, even the local municipalities where the activity occurs, all help to ensure that any waste generated is properly managed and will not degrade water quality. Because concrete and other cement-based wastewater have a high pH level of around 12 and contain many admix chemicals and other properties including toxic metals, the EPA has established requirements for construction sites to properly manage these and other potentially harmful chemicals and their byproducts cement-based waste has a pH of around 12, while a product like Drano liquid drain cleaner has a pH of around 13.5. A pH of 7 is normal or balanced. Additionally, the local municipalities have increased responsibilities and are required to reduce the pollutants that can enter the storm drain system. Much of our public still doesn't know that most storm drains don't go to a wastewater plant or receive any kind of treatment. Storm drain systems were designed to simply carry the rainwater away from developed areas and discharge it to a local pond, creek, lake, river, or other waterway, all untreated. These waterways collectively become waters of the state. They are regulated by local, state, and federal regulations. They are important not only because of the wildlife, recreation, and ecology, but because they are also one of our primary sources of drinking water. This is why local municipalities are tasked with this responsibility. It's understood that ready-mix producers and contractors both have equipment and tools that must be washed off before the concrete hardens. It must be done in a responsible manner to meet these regulations and to protect the reputation of the concrete construction industry. Indiana communities are regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency and the Indiana Department of Environmental Management in order to prevent pollutants from entering our waterways. When pollutants such as concrete washout are improperly handled, it is a violation of the Federal Clean Water Act, state law, and your community's local stormwater ordinance and subject to enforcement action from any of these levels. Enforcement action can result in stop work orders, fines of up to $10,000, and even jail time. According to the EPA, the primary objectives for handling concrete washout to prevent it from entering the waterways of the state are to collect and retain all of the concrete washout waters and solids in an approved concrete washout or leak-proof container that will be properly disposed of, or collect, recycle, or return 100% of the concrete washout water back into the mixer drum by pumping it, or by using 5-gallon buckets so it can be returned to the plant for proper disposal that may include reuse or recycling. No one on the work site has the authority to allow or instruct you to wash out anywhere other than an approved, properly maintained washout location or by appropriate recycling methods. Every concrete delivery will fall under some kind of regulations and will need to follow some basic rules. So what is expected on the job site? Larger construction sites are required to have a written plan called a Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan that specifically calls out methods and practices to prevent stormwater pollution from construction activities. Specific areas should be designated for concrete washouts that meet a specific leak-proof design, are easily accessible, and well-marked. These must also receive regular maintenance or replacement. A mixer driver or concrete contractor choosing to not use a designated or approved concrete washout area can expose themselves and the project owner to enforcement actions. On larger sites, the permit holder is responsible for providing and maintaining a proper washout that is easily identified and accessible. The contractor has the responsibility to use it, as does the ready mix company and driver. Any or all parties could be cited for their own neglect. Smaller projects and residential jobs may not have a concrete washout location provided. It will be the responsibility of both the mixer driver and the contractor to each properly clean their own tools and equipment and properly dispose of the waste. 
The improper wash-up or disposal of wash water will expose the concrete contractor, the ready-mixed concrete company, and the driver as well as the property owner to fines and cleanup costs under the same and or similar ordinances that regulate illegal dumping called Illicit Discharge Detection and Elimination, or IDDE. On these smaller sites, the concrete contractor and the ready-mix company have a shared responsibility to ensure that the concrete wash water is properly handled, as each have their own equipment and tools to be washed off. Any or all parties can be cited for their own neglect. Technologies and options are ever-changing to meet the demands and needs of the construction industry, and concrete washouts are no different. Many options are currently available and affordable, and new options are introduced routinely. Systems can be disposable or reusable, purchased or rented, portable or fixed, and they come in all shapes and sizes to meet the needs of any project. Some ready-mix producers even have an onboard pump system to solve the problem. Ultimately, how you choose to accomplish the task is up to you, the construction site operator, the contractor, and the ready-mix company. Dumping on the ground or into a storm drain is no longer an option. Hand tools can be washed in a five gallon bucket and or wheelbarrow and then taken to your washout location or designated area for proper disposal. If you are working on a site that does not have a designated washout area, then you should wash out into a container such as a five gallon bucket and haul the washout water to an appropriate washout location. Pump trucks and motor operations are not exempt and may require some additional effort to contain and dispose of the waste. Decorative concrete has been popular for some time and is a common practice in most markets because of the textures and beauty it offers customers. The process to create these colors and textures requires chemical retarders, stains, dyes, and a host of other chemical compounds and processes that can also harm our waterways or groundwater. Exposed aggregate has been around a very long time and is a familiar process to most in the industry. When the chemical retarder and top layer of the cement paste is washed away to expose the aggregate, it creates a waste product that contains a high pH in chemical compounds. Just like the concrete washout, this waste product must be contained and not simply washed down the storm drain or just diluted with more spray water. Similarly, concrete sawing and grinding can produce the same kinds of waste and must be managed properly. Decorative or stamped concrete processes are vast and can include acids, stains, acrylics, pigments, sealers, and the list of chemicals goes on. Many of these methods also produce waste products. Regardless of the special process you are performing, the same basic rules apply. Never dump or wash anything down a storm drain other than clean, clear water. There is really no difference between intentional dumping and careless work practices. The same violation exists. Properly apply and store your chemicals. Don't think that just because you can't see a drain nearby that you are okay. When it rains, the runoff will pick up the waste and chemicals and carry it to the storm drain network and into our waterways. Remember that it's all interconnected. You are responsible for your own mess and must make plans to properly manage, collect, and dispose of your waste and byproducts. Just because it may be difficult or challenging doesn't give you the okay to wash it away or leave it behind. U.S. News and World Report states that, worldwide, some 19 billion tons of concrete is used annually. While concrete is a much-needed construction material, the resulting washout and chemicals used in the industry must be handled in a responsible manner. By following the precautions described in this video, you can help to advance the image of your company, the concrete construction industry, and help to keep our waterways clean for ourselves and for generations to come.